The first step to performing a better Kegel is to understand the anatomy of your pelvic floor musculature. This is a pelvic floor model. The very front here are the pubic bones, just so you have orientation where it's at, which are right in the front here. This is the top of your pelvic bones. And then all of this in the red are muscles that encompass your pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor muscles are like a hammock. They go from the pubic bone in the front all the way to the coccyx bone in the back. If I turn the model around, you can see all the red. You can see the muscles. You have a superficial layer, which is your first layer, that surrounds the vaginal opening. And then you have a middle layer that compresses the urethra that comes off the bladder. And when that has good tone and good strength, you don't have the leakage that can just come out with coughing and sneezing. And then there's a deeper muscle layer called the levator ani layer. This is the third layer. You can see that muscle layer. If I turn the pelvis in, you can see all the red and where it attaches to all the bony uh, parts of the pelvis. When those muscles contract, it's an upward lift and squeeze, and it closes all of these openings, including the urethra, the vagina, and the rectum. When we have good tone in our muscles, we have good support around those openings, and therefore good bowel and bladder control and organ support your pelvic floor organs attach, the ligaments attach up into the muscular walls of your pelvic musculature, and when those muscles are strong, we have good organ support. When they become weak, then things become lax and we can get incontinent and also have pelvic organ prolapse. So when we do a Kegel, especially for a female, we want to think of squeezing the labia together and also squeezing and lifting the anus, kind of like a puckering. You should not feel any thigh muscles contracting or outer gluteal muscles contracting. Conversely, for men, it's a little different. You also want to think about lifting the anus and lifting the musculature without squeezing the outer buttocks, but you also want to think about squeezing and pulling inward in the front. A uh, common tip we use for men is pull the turtle head back in the shell, and so that just means pulling the penis inward towards you. You get a stronger contraction when you contract all three layers together and that is a proper way to do a Kegel. When you find those muscles and you feel like you can generate a contraction, you want to work up to doing about 10 repetitions with a 10 second hold and a good 10 to 20 second rest in between and do that a few times a day. You can also practice quick contractions where you squeeze and let go about 10 times in this kind of a rhythm, okay? You want to do your Kegels, like I said, just a few times a day. Once in the morning, maybe later in the afternoon and then at night don't do all three sets at once, you'll over fatigue. Once you've done them correctly, you should gradually feel an improvement in your bowel and bladder control. If you're not finding success with performing your Kegel exercises at home, it may be time to seek more guidance from a pelvic floor physical therapist. I've often found that patients think they're finding their muscles correctly, but they're not and still need some guidance. So the pelvic floor physical therapist that you will see or may see will help guide you and instruct you in an appropriate home program that will help you achieve your goals. They may also perform transvaginal or transrectal electrical stimulation, or it could be with surface electrodes on the outside. There may also be physical therapy that includes a vaginal or rectal weight to provide resistance to help you gain the strength of your muscles faster. I've often found great success with those.